Hello, guys, and welcome back to the MSC Performance Podcast with me, Mark Coulson, and Mr. Max Hartman. It's Hello, great man. to be back. Great to be back for a brand new season, January 2022. Pumped. Pumped to be back. Excited. To be back. New year, new me. New year, new me. And we are happy to be here. Um, nice break over Christmas. Jim was a little bit more chilled out. Slightly reduced hours, mm -hmm. still people coming in, keeping fit, which was great to see. Uh, but I think everybody, staff and members, have had that little bit of time off, mm -hmm. um, or at least reduced, you know, the amount of uh, contact time in the gym. I think that's a good thing, you know. Once once a year, having a week bit of downtime, um, refresh, replenish, we go again. We go again. How have you been, mate? <laughs> All right, mate. Yeah, I had. Um... I'll start off by saying I had a bit longer off than most people with the, I had the dreaded Rona uh, pre-Christmas. Pre-Christmas, it's all good now. Who hasn't had it? Um, yeah, just with this new, the, I mean, it's we go straight in this COVID chat straight away, which feels like the kind yeah. of the, the path of the course for the last couple of years. But um, it was it was fairly mild, got out of the way early, still had a nice Christmas, still had a chance to kind of refresh and energise, as you said. Um I wasn't unfortunate to be in isolation over Christmas, which is good. Um, unfortunately, a lot of people obviously were. Um, but yeah, still kind of as best you can time it. Timed it well enough that, you know, ready to knuckle down and get back into a fresh year of training and, like I say, kind of take on the new year, take on January as it's meant to be. Absolutely, absolutely. It's one of those now, I think it's so common, the COVID, thing. you? People are sending bosses the, the picture with the squiggling the line on the, yeah, on the COVID yeah, test yeah. and oh, having COVID, a nice bit sorry. of time off. So yeah. I must admit, mate, we did think with your yeah. with, the with the timing. We know you like a, a bit of a bit of time a off for Christmas. Christmas. And, uh, there was a bit of chat there around the office that uh, perhaps uh, mate, Luke's, Luke's number on. one candidate for that. If Luke, if Luke, if Luke yeah. disappears and comes yeah, back with a great yeah. time, says so he's had COVID, then you know what well, he pulled. He pulled his uh, COVID card earlier <laughs> in the year in the, in the summer, yeah, yeah, so true, he has a bit of time true. off. So uh, suspiciously, he can do it, he can do it again. Season. Yeah, he can do it again. He'll save that for, mm. for this year, probably. Mm. But, uh, but yeah. Um, Let's yeah you know, give the guys an update of what's going on in your your training world, mate. Like uh, specifically, obviously, a bit of time off with COVID. Did you did you manage to do a bit when you were at home? Are you back in now, sort of in the swing of things? What are the targets? Yeah, so so we managed to look, luckily, you know, of the ten days that we were at home, like there was kind of a solid week where we're pretty good, really. Once the initial two or three days went, but um, you know, the symptoms and everything had gone. But I spent a week where we were just waiting to get out. So. Managed to borrow, a, managed to borrow a bike off Ben. Um, so we had the, we had the bike in the living room. Um, so for like seven days, it was just loads of aerobic work. Obviously, taking the time to kind of ease back in after the kind of cough and whatnot were gone. But um, I had a really, really good amount of like solid aerobic work. Um, even when we kind of came out of isolation, um, did a couple of sessions in the gym. But it was actually quite nice, just from a mental perspective. You know, went out for a few runs, made sure we got some good hikes in over the Christmas break, which was really nice. So it's been um it's been quite it feels like it's been a long time since I've kind of lifted with any consistency because obviously that would take me back to the kind of first couple of weeks of December. Um but aerobically can you know all things considered feeling really, really good because I managed to get quite a lot of training done in that time. Like I say, bike work in, in isolation, hiking since then, uh, a couple of runs over Christmas. Uh and then the last sort of week or two it's been back in, getting under the barbell, getting that moving again. Um and feeling really good, feeling weak, but um but yeah, moving moving weight's quite nice. Yeah, I think it will just build up through January. That's you know, strength something that I think comes back relatively quickly if you've got some good structure there. If you kind of if you know what you're doing, if you're quite experienced, I think you know, as much as it kind of feels tough when you get back into it, especially I think a lot of people will be in the same boat at this point. It feels tough when you get back into lifting after a couple of weeks off. A lot of people are also really surprised how fast the strength comes back or you know, how you can actually get away with a couple of weeks of indulging yes. and come back in and, and lift some pretty good tin and, and, and feel good. So yeah. um, it's just a question of getting back on the horse, getting back into habit, getting back into good routine yeah. and, and our strength comes back pretty quick. I think it's a case of not panicking, isn't it? When you come back into it and not, you know, buying off more you can chew, trying yeah. to go straight back in a heavy, you know, heavy numbers necessarily mm -hmm. that first week, just kind of easing back in and just picking it up. And like you say, the, the numbers will come back pretty, pretty swiftly if we're consistent. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'll tell you what else as well uh, comes back pretty quickly after after the Christmas holidays is um, your natural body weight. 
Yeah. You know, I think yeah. um, a lot of people will jump on the scales over Christmas. Panic. Panic. <laughs> you know, on, you know, three, four, five pounds, panic, mm -hmm. you know, and think they've undone all the hard work throughout the, throughout the year. Mm -hmm. Whereas, obviously, what we know, but what a lot of people don't know, is that that weight could be a, a number of factors and a very small amount of that and a very small percentage of chance mm -hmm. is that you've put on body fat. Yeah, um, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, I mean, you know, you're potentially a pound, but like, you know, if we're talking about the amount of calories required to put on a pound of, you know, a, a, a fat, fat, you know, yeah. we're talking, you know, three and a half thousand, you know, calories, and that's going to be above your, you know, your average, you know, maintenance mm -hmm. or your average expenditure anyway. Mm -hmm. So like, you know, if you're someone who takes a lot, you know, is is about three and a half, you know, thousand a day is as you know as as your standard, um, you know, energy expenditure and your your break even if you like, um, you'd be consuming seven eight thousand calories mm -hmm. a day, you know, to you know to, over to, Christmas to, week to put on five six pounds. Yeah, I yeah, mean, that's which pretty, is that's pretty hard. It's, a good, it's, possible. it's, a, good it's possible. it's a good week. It's a good week. It's a good week. You've had some fun, but mm -hmm. um, you know, obviously, there's a lot of water weight you, you're going to be holding. A lot of glycogen, um, a lot of water. You know, there's, glycogen, yeah. You know, there's, aside from actually eating excess calories, and especially over Christmas, you know, very carb-heavy calories, very kind of fat-heavy calories, sugar, salt. Um, you know, there's, there's, the, there's, the there's yeah. a factor of alcohol as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Which again, like you know, you could, if you've been on a big weekend or if you've had a big night out on a Friday or Saturday, it's easy to come into into the gym and have a, a good amount of water weight and be quite bloated up until yes. maybe like yeah. like Monday, definitely Monday, often Tuesday as well. Yeah. Um, yeah. And that, that's a real factor. That's a really significant factor. So if you've had sort of a week or ten days where you've been eating over the odds, drinking in just a couple of beers a day or whatnot, you know, you can really take some time to get back to some sort of some level of equilibrium where you know your you, your water balance is 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 back to kind of what you would consider normal um you know your you kind of your glycogen levels are back to normal your salt levels back to normal um and you know you, your body's just kind of functioning as it's meant to when it hasn't just been through a roller coaster of calories and alcohol yeah. for 10 days if you're if you're a regular gym goer and you've you know you're you know a, a 60 60 kilo female and you've put on two pounds you know, or even two kilos over yeah. over Christmas, I certainly wouldn't panic. You know, no, um, no, no, you know that's no. absolutely nothing, and that will naturally, without doing anything other mm -hmm. than the usual, mm -hmm. start moving again a little bit more. You know, naturally over Christmas, like step count's going to be down a little bit, food's going to be up a little bit. Mm -hmm. Like I say, water retention, all yeah. these kind of things. Just get you know, just get back into sort of things, and it will even out by the end of the yeah. month. Like it's one thing that um, you know, I think one thing we'll talk about a lot today is going to be you know the idea of goal setting and the idea of um, you know how to plan your nutrition, how to plan your training and whatnot. But you know what you were just saying there about getting back to moving a little bit more and getting back to just getting back into normal good habits. You know, I had a really good conversation with one of my online coaching clients last week. He was asking about nutrition. He was asking about how to set it up and whatnot and how to know when he's in a deficit and trying to get back into a deficit as soon as possible and wanting to train every hour under the sun. Yeah. I said, the first thing you need to do before you even worry about any of that is like get to the point where like, if you want to track calories, track calories, but get into the habit of, you know, logging all your food on my fitness pal, get into the habit of just eating at maintenance. Mm -hmm. Like if you can, if you can, you know, weigh and measure and track everything you eat for a week and you can be spot on at maintenance, you can hit your protein goal or get above your protein goal. If you can get, you know, two or three gym sessions in a week, that's probably infinitely better than whatever you've been doing for the last month. hundred percent. Infinitely better. Without, it's easy. It's easy with, progress right now. Yeah. Like, with, without having to go near, you know, seven gym sessions a week, yes. without having to go near and um, trying to put yourself into a big calorie deficit because you're trying to claw back those few pounds. Just get to the point where like you are at some level of like basic, yeah. like get, get to the point where you're eating maintenance. So you know, you're eating maintenance, you know, you're getting all your protein in and you're probably going to start seeing pr pretty good, pretty positive body mm -hmm. composition changes just from doing that. Yeah. Um, you know, there's, yeah. there's, there's very real physiological and psychological reasons why it is hard to stay in a deficit. You know, your body's going to fight you. If you're trying to eat five, six, 700 calories a day under maintenance and you're trying, you know, there's a reason why a lot of people say diets don't work. For yeah. example, you know, there's a reason why people do yo-yo diets and, and weight comes on. Yeah, exactly. Like it, it, it is again, physiologically and psychologically. Then we all know anecdotally, it is hard to eat in a, in a deficit. Your body will naturally fight against that. Your mind will naturally fight against that, especially when you're coming from a period of excess. 
So just get into the point where you're being really diligent with hitting maintenance, maintenance calories. Maintenance. You're doing more than you have yeah. done in weeks. I agree. I agree. Um, yeah. and, and, and it fosters consistency. It fosters um, adherence. And when you put it together with getting back into normal sleep patterns, getting yeah. back into normal activity, getting back into some level of good base training, yeah. you know, that in itself is huge. If your maintenance is 3,000 calories throughout the year and you're pretty steady with that, pretty consistent, mm -hmm. you go to Christmas and all of a sudden you're having 5,000 calories a day yeah. on average, you're doing um, you know, 4,000 steps as opposed to 10,000 steps a day, you're doing one gym session a week rather than three, mm -hmm. you know, yeah, that's that's all you need to do yeah. Yeah. is get yourself back into maintenance. Yeah. All of a sudden, you're going from five thousand calories to three thousand calories, um, eating a little bit more sensibly, yeah. um, moving a little bit more. Doesn't have to be ten thousand steps; could be seven thousand steps. Mm -hmm. Start working your way back up. Um, it could be two gym sessions rather than one, yeah. and just do it that way. I think that's the the key. Uh, that'll be one of the key messages you go through today. Is is not to panic mm -hmm. you know not to panic it's just slowly you get yourself back to maintenance before we think about before you really try and push out, yeah. before you run sort of yeah, thing exactly. um, and um, I think as well I think like with the psychological aspect I think it's really yes we 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 want a hundred percent as we just said want to ease our way back in what we do want to make sure we do though is get back in mm -hmm. like is to not make that um let's say you, let's say you've put on uh four pounds over the christmas period mm -hmm. so as we've just discussed like that is more than likely going to drop off by just slowly getting back to a normal way of life um because it's not normal you know christmas is not normal like no, you, know, you have a week or two no. where it's not normal ferrero rocher for breakfast and a glass of champagne i mean that's just in my household but, um you know um and uh, you know, walk the dog and, well, and every, everything but, that comes with yeah, it. Yeah, so um, it, you know, just get. It. But but what you, but what you mustn't do is um, let that carry on throughout January mm -hmm. and just get disheartened mm -hmm. by the fact that you've put four or five pounds on. So I think this this might be the key message of today's podcast. Actually, if you're listening, is if you've put a few pounds, don't be disheartened. Don't think you've thrown it all away. Don't think you've start just, now. but, but yeah, start mm -hmm. now, start now. Cause what you don't want to do is you've had that December, you've got a few pounds on, that's fine. As I said, get back to the normal routine. Mm -hmm. That'll come off. But what you don't want to do is extend that through January. Cause you're upset that you've put mm -hmm. a few pounds on, you give up, you feel, you know, you feel pretty, pretty weak. You feel pretty mm -hmm. soft, you know, don't extend that throughout January. And then it does become yeah. a, an issue. Do you know what I mean? Start becoming an adult again. Yeah. We, we talk about the idea of getting back to normal, getting back to baseline. You know, this is assuming that, you know, for the other 11 months of the year and in the run up to Christmas, we know a lot of our members have, you know, because we see them in here, because we talk to them a lot, because we see you know, how much progress people make when we're in here every day. You see people really develop throughout the year. We know that that doesn't happen in a vacuum. We know that doesn't happen unless you are training well, unless you are eating well, or at least paying some focus to these factors, paying some attention to them. So this is generally, generally speaking to the members, you know, assuming their normal is looking after their food, looking after their training, looking after their stress and recovery. The real problem happens when you let Christmas drag on into January, you let it drag on into February, and then your normal yeah. is eating badly your normal is getting into the gym Bad once a week yeah your normal and, and and that's when things really do start to snowball and it is really really hard to drag yourself back in then yeah. if you really if you let it drag on and you let the, the switch flip so normal goes from you know good habits to then normal goes to what is for a lot of us kind of christmas lifestyle and mm -hmm. um, that's when you know you, you really start to 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 get issues yeah. when you're trying to get back into it and that's when it really is an uphill battle um Whereas, you know, if you can, if you can make a, a firm, if you can firmly establish that Christmas is the exception, those two weeks, the exception, you know, it doesn't have to be completely back to, like we said before, it doesn't have to be back to 500 sessions a week and a big, def uh, five sessions a week and a big calorie deficit now, but, you know, some sort of habit and structure through January really make sure you realize, okay, Christmas was Christmas and it's back to the norm now. There's a sweet spot, isn't there, where mm -hmm. like you've got that end of the spectrum, which is yeah, let's not let it drag on. Let's not be a slob. Let's not, you know, continue that lifestyle throughout January where that becomes a norm. You get, you get into bad habits and bad routines. Mm -hmm. And then there's the other end of the spectrum where we can go too far mm -hmm. and we can panic and start, like we say, going on a mad 
calorie yeah, deficit, exactly, coming in the exactly. gym, you know, doing six hit sessions a week, mm-hmm. um, you know, and, and going going too far the other way. Yeah, to the point where it's not sustainable. I think last I think last time I was on last time we we we, we had this exact conversation here. We talk about this idea of you know consistency trumping intensity every single time. Yeah, and um, and that goes for you know just normal habits and normal training as well as when you're trying to get back into. You know, get back into the groove in January and and get back into the swing of things. Um, you know, it, it is enough to just get back in and get three sessions a week under your belt and get that as the normal habit and the normal baseline again. And then through February and March, you know, if you're starting to look ahead to to summer and you're really wanting to push on, then you know, it's easy to build on that. It's easy to add one extra session a week. It's easy to bump your step count up twenty yeah. percent. It's easy to then implement you know eight weeks of maybe a three or four you know, a ten percent calorie deficit or you know three or four hundred calorie deficit. Um, but trying to establish that as the baseline straight away, yes, pressuring yourself yeah. to get five, six sessions a yeah. week, pressuring yourself to live in a deficit from the first of January through yeah. till summer or whatnot. You know, it's um, it's a very good way of of swinging too far towards loads of intensity and diet and exercise, um, and taking the balance away from something that is can you know sustainable and and allows for consistency. We don't want to go zero to turbo mm-hmm. straight straight away, and that's mm-hmm. you know the same rule of thumb as we'd use with you know beginners, people who are coming, yeah. people who are coming back into the gym after a long layoff, mm-hmm. post Christmas, whatever it is. As you said, you know consistency, you know trumps you know trumps intensity, it trumps everything. You know we've got to be got to be consistent with our training, so we've got to be you know building into that gradually, setting the standards with our nutrition you know being realistic in terms of what we can do and the, the beauty of it is you almost get those like you know little beginner gains in january yeah, exactly. like you say by by moving again by getting getting back into it um yeah i mean if we got um you know it's obviously a time of year where people will be thinking of starting to come to the gym you know mm-hmm. never been to the gym before never really exercised before um you know what what kind of advice would you give to these guys i mean you know along the same lines obviously but uh I th- you know we, we've just spoken about a lot of it what 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 would what i'd advise a lot of the members who are returning from time off i'd also advise like you said to, to people who are brand new to it you know start getting to the point where you've got habits that are sustainable and habits that you can build on um, and habits that kind of set a platform for you to then spring off should you decide you know I've been lifting weights for a few months. I want to compete in powerlifting or I've been lifting for weights for a few months. I want to compete in an obstacle course race or whatnot. If you have this good base of um, good sort of athletic habits, so to speak, where you're managing stress, you're in the gym doing something three or four times a week. You know, if you get to the point where you're, you've got a habit of exercising four times a week, if you then want to specialize in distance running, you then want to specialize in weightlifting. You've got a platform there. You've got a good um, general strength base. You've got a good cardiovascular base. It's easy to then specialize. Um, but just good general athletic behaviors to begin with for, form the foundation of that. Um, I did have something else in my head then, but it's completely it's gone. Being, it's, it's, <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, it's, be, it's being realistic as well, isn't it? It's like if, you, you know, if you've never stuck to going to the gym in your life and you know, you've never strung together more than a week or two, it's, it's being realistic and going in with like, you know, and, and this is basic goal setting in life, isn't it? I don't want to get mm-hmm. too deep into like smart yeah, goals yeah, yeah. and stuff yeah. like that, but like, you know, it's making it realistic mm-hmm. is so important, I think. Yeah. And the amount of times like over the year, not so much here, but like, you know, previous work that we've, we've done uh, before MSC, you'd get a lot of people coming in and, you know, yeah, like I want to, I want to hit the gym this year. This year, this year is my year. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, I want to come to the gym, you know, um, I want to, I want to be ripped. I want to do seven sessions a week. I want to, you know, uh, and then you ask, right. Okay. Well, what's your history? What have you done previously? It's like, Oh yeah, I've never strung together more than a week or two. And it's mm-hmm. like, okay, is coming to the gym seven times a week. Is that really realistic. Gonna is it, yeah. is it going to yeah. happen? Is it necessary? No, but is it going to, is it going to happen? Mm-hmm. So like when you're, if you're, if you're new to training, I'd say like is setting realistic, Mm-hmm. goals is so important and just starting off with like the absolute minimal of getting like good habits and grains mm-hmm. things you know you, you look at the best you look at the best athletes the best trainers um you know the guys you know who are the fittest and the healthiest mm-hmm. and it is guys who are consistent yeah you know 100%. it's like um you know one of my online guys and you know and, and mates matty like you know he, he's not missed a session in years mm-hmm. and the thing is like he 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 puts, you know, he, we work three sessions a week. Mm-hmm. 
we don't go six sessions a week. We don't mm. go five, six, seven sessions a week because we look at the overall picture of the lifestyle. Mm. You know, previously it was playing rugby, now retired, but like two kids, mm. you know, busy, like high end job, busy job. You know, what can we do that's realistic? And, you know, you'd much rather hit three sessions a week mm. over 52 aim, weeks aim for of six the year. And get two. Exactly. Mm. Or aim for six and do like two weeks, have a month off come back in do seven sessions have you know a yeah. month off etc cetera, etc cetera. it's you know it, it's setting it, realistic targets and you have to look at the overall picture of where you're at what you've done before what is your lifestyle mm -hmm. what does it you know what does it entail be just be really honest with yourself and realistic because then you can set goals that are achievable we know that you know if we can be consistent that's when we start to get results when we start to get that we start to put you know we start to have more belief in ourselves mm -hmm. you know we start to enjoy the process because we're seeing the adaptations mm -hmm. we're seeing the, the, the results and, and, and it compounds then once you once you get to the point where the ball is rolling once you get to the point where you say right i'm achieving these three sessions a week something subconsciously that's that switch flicks and says you know what if i'm in the gym three times a week it makes sense to pay more focus on my nutrition it makes more sense to look at what i'm eating it makes more sense to um make those changes if you're going out for a few drinks at the weekend with friends it makes more sense to keep a bit of a lid on it drink you know slightly lower calorie choices than going out and having sinking 10 pints yeah. kebab um you know if you're really putting the effort into training you start to think about how can i tweak these little elements elsewhere that are going to really positively contribute to what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. um, and all these different elements kind of add up and start to build and snowball to the point where, you know, you've got a good training habit in place um, and you've got a lifestyle that really facilitates that. You're not fighting, the training's not fighting against a lifestyle that doesn't really, um, that isn't conducive to, mm -hmm. to progression. Um, and you can very much see that, that association between I've done the work in the gym, I'm seeing progress, I want that to continue. Um, and you start to foster behaviors that then really build on that and really facilitate it as opposed to getting in the way and pulling in the opposite direction. hundred percent. Yeah. hundred percent. I think it's, it's that time of year as well where like, you know, people will make the resolutions and it might be like, right, can I come to, you know, can I come to the gym? I'm going to get fit, et cetera, et cetera. Um, you know, re resolutions, you know, obviously get a bad rap and, you know, they can be quite flaky, but I think what's good is, you know, it's a natural time to set goals, isn't mm -hmm. it? I, you know, I set goals myself, you know, um, calendar year, start of January, sit down, right, what do I want to achieve in 2022? And then at the end of the year, I look back at the year and, you know, I'm not necessarily going through every single one, ticking it and crossing off, but you have an overview of like, okay, did I achieve those, those things? And I think, you know, so, okay, we might, you know, we might not be making New Year's resolutions because I think, you know, resolutions are things that, you know, small things that come through, through habit and good, you know, good, good discipline, good habits um you know day to day well i think what can be good is you know setting goals um you know for example we might have like right okay this year that's this is what i'm gonna look to do but then bringing that right down from the macro to the micro mm -hmm. of like right what's what's my goal this month and then what's my goal this week mm -hmm. what's my what's my goal today do you know what i mean yeah so like we might have that year-long goal of like right i want to lose three stone or I want to be, uh, I want to deadlift 200 kilos, or you know, it might be a fairly unspecific goal of I want to be fitter and, mm -hmm. and, and healthier. So that's great, that's fantastic because you've got that longer term, you know, goal to, to to work towards. But then you can't just have that because you get guys like you know leaving it, not getting into mm -hmm. good habits. We've got to shorten that into almost like if that's your long term, you've got a medium of like right this month or three months. How many gym sessions am I going to get to? Let's let's have that as a target. Let's not focus on numbers necessarily mm -hmm. or anything like that. Let's get into good habits, good routines, and try and bring that right down to the micro of like right this week mm -hmm. or today. Right, um, what am I going to do today that's going to help that journey? Is it going to be ten thousand steps? Is it going to be eating you know in a certain way? Is it going to be tracking my yeah. calories? And and I think that's where it building good quite, behaviors. It, yeah. it builds in quite nicely the idea of behaviors and the idea of. Um, you know, condensing a, a long-term goal down into a short-term goal. If you turn around and say, I want to lose 10 kilos in, you know, 10 kilos in 10 months, you can easily boil that down and say, right, that equates to one kilogram per month. But the most important thing you can do there, I think, as opposed to just that outcome goal, like you said, is boil it down to the micro and say, what is the daily behavior 
or what is the process that's going to lead me to that? Yes. As opposed to having this vague notion of I need to lose, you know, 30 grams a day. Yes. To equate to 10 kilos a, a year. Was it a oh. goal? A goal without a plan is a it's wish. Just a dream. Is a, it's is just a dream. It's a dream. It's a dream. <laughs> um, a dream yeah. But 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 I think in the first master Uruguay or <laughs> kung fu panda. In uh, you know, in the first in the first instance, it's a question of boiling down and saying what is the process I need to go through on a day to day basis to make sure that this goal happens. Uh, and then there's got to be some level of intrinsic motivation to do that. So again, if you're, if you think that your process should be a 300 calories a day deficit and three gym sessions a week, it's all well and good having that. You know what that process is, but really boiling down and coming away from the goal setting side of things is, is, um, working out what your motivation to do that is, um, f- find your why. I think that was one of your, uh, your secret Santa presence among, was, amongst, other was, things, amongst other things, which we won't go into. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, Can't wait to get stuck into that. Yeah. 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 <laughs> um, you know, there's, there's a great, uh, an author and a, a podcaster and a speaker called, uh, Simon Sinek, who I'd highly recommend. He's, he's given the, the most viewed Ted talk ever, uh, which is, which is find your why, you know, what, what is the motivation behind, what you're doing and, and, and why is it really important that you do this? It's all well and good saying, you know, I want to lose weight, but is it because, you know, behind all of that, is it because you've always felt uncomfortable, uh, you know, in social situations or around other people and you and you need confidence to do that and you think it'll come from getting fitter and healthier? Um, you know, it, are there certain health markers? Do you want to be able to play with your kids and, and, and play football with them in 20 years time. So you need to keep healthy. You can really, really find the motivation by, you know, so to speak, finding your why. And it's a very, very powerful tool. And all of a sudden those daily, those daily targets and those daily behaviors become a lot clearer. If you get home, sit down, have a cup of tea after work and you sat on the sofa, it's nice and warm and it's half past five after work and it's cold outside. It's very, very easy to think, you know what, that, daily behavior that I need to go through of eating less and getting to the gym more. It's very easy to let that slip. Whereas if you think, you know, I've got my why, I know why I'm doing this. It's a lot easier to get up off the sofa and get down to the gym and work hard for 45 minutes. Um, exactly. Exactly. It's fi- finding meaning, finding direction uh, and finding the why, fi- really boiling down to what, you know, why is it you're doing this? Uh, and then having an understanding of, of, you know, you want to do this, but also what you need to do on a day to day basis if you just have this vague notion of like, this is my year, I'm going to lose loads of weight, or this is my year, I'm going to get really fit. There's no substance to that. If you don't know why you're doing it, you don't know how you're doing it. There's not a massive amount behind it unless you can, um, you, know, you can really nail down those two things. What to do, what do I do on a day-to-day basis and how do I force myself to do that on a day-to-day basis? Find your why uh, and it becomes easy. Brilliant. Find your why. You've got that inner motivation, that desire, that purpose. Mm-hmm set the long-term target mm-hmm. work in the short term of mm-hmm. day to day what can i do today to work towards mm-hmm. that habit and you know it doesn't always have to be a gym session it doesn't always have to you know it like I say it might be in the gym twice a week mm-hmm. but what can we do in between what can we do what small habits can we mm-hmm. build up and ingrain you know to to get ourselves you know to a to a you know better better position um mm-hmm. And like I say, you know, it's, we'll, we'll all have our reasons and our why of, as to why we make sure we always hit a Monday session mm-hmm. or, you know, whatever, it, you know, why we always hit X amount of sessions per week or why are we working towards this goal or that goal. So, yeah, really fascinating. Very much look forward to reading that book as well. Yes, yeah, it's, uh, it's a good one. So yeah. I think I'll be, uh, I'll be borrowing it off you when you finish. Absolutely. That one or... That one, yeah, that one, that one, that yeah. one. Okay, good. Um, so, yeah, hopefully that uh, helps our, our viewers. It might be worth just a little um, kind of, you know, for our MSC gang, just kind of giving a bit of a brief chat update as to what's happening. Obviously, we're back in the, you know, we're back now. We're back ready to go. Mm-hmm. Um, so we've had a nice bit of downtime, you know, in the, in the Christmas period. Um, what can we look forward to in 2022? at msc big plans big plans big plans it's going to be a big year it's going to be a big year um i think uh you know the the key for us is to continue to um grow the community um Mm -hmm. and that doesn't just mean in terms of numbers that means you know the strength of uh, the community was a big thing last year you know had a you know tough year in terms of obstacles in terms of covid you know, shut from January to April, 
bounce back and you know it was you know hugely down to mm -hmm. you know the strength of the community people pulling together cracking on and all the members helping each other you know working towards their own individual mm -hmm. uh, goals so you know further strengthening that we'll be doing that through um you know some events that will be coming up some socials um you know our strengthening even further the quality of our classes um you know etc cetera, etc cetera. so you know metcon games will be back coming soon yes we have got a date uh, which we will announce soon um so very much looking forward to that we're going to look at getting two of those in this year also looking at getting one strength based uh comp in at some point um so two metcon games uh, one earlier in the year one later in the year strength uh, focus one which might be you know another deadlifting one which was very popular mm -hmm. uh, pre-christmas or it might be a full powerlifting or weightlifting type one we will see mm -hmm. um but really looking forward to like a big focus on you know those events you know you've seen them yourself like the community the, feel the, yeah the community feel mm -hmm. of like you know, the, of those kind of challenges and events um, is what it's all about, really. And the socials that come with them as well. And the so, socials. Yeah, and as, as much as we've just spoken about good, you know, good athletic behaviours, can't you, we enjoy them? You, you, yeah, well, yeah, we do. We do enjoy them every now and again. Um, but you, you really can't under under under. I can't get my words out. Underestimate the importance of that kind of social feel. Uh, rugby. Think of rugby like you've oh, got, yeah, you know, yeah, you've got yeah. Um, yeah. teams of all levels, even you know, at top professional level mm -hmm. that you know will ensure that they get some yeah, team yeah, socials yeah. in yeah. because um, you it, know it's got nothing to do with the physical capacities of the sport, but in terms of building camaraderie, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. The teamwork, togetherness, all mm -hmm. those kind of things. And I think that's obviously something me and you have experienced before and yeah, yeah and carry that into this and i think it's something that i know you, you spoke about this since almost since day one when i first when i first came on board at msc um you know the ability to kind of give people that third space outside of work yes. and home um is massive and i think it's something that we really pride ourselves on it's something that you can really see when you come to those events when people have the deadlift party before christmas obviously i was i, I, I wasn't here i could make it because of because of the rona um but when you when you see the the impact that has and people coming down here having a laugh having fun having a couple of drinks um having some food together and 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 you know having a space to do that um that in itself is, is massive in building consistency everyone that went to that deadlift party um everyone that comes to the socials they'll be in here on a monday to say about how much of a good weekend they had they'll be talking to new people they might not have spoken to before and that in the long run will foster consistency People, people do oh, can keep, and do come back. Keep each other accountable. Yeah, keep each other accountable as well. Yeah. We talk about a big mix of sport. You know, mm. it will be in a Monday barbell and yeah. the uh, when you know, chasing when back when you back in, in. He's, doing, he's doing the job for us. Yeah. Um, so uh, yeah, the, the socials are a big one. Want some good socials this year? Like you know, we've got some good ones in last year. Obviously, we had the year before of you know COVID, where it's just impossible to get anything done mm -hmm. uh, with that side of things. So not just mm -hmm. you know, not just out on the on the on the booze. It'll be you know some other socials as well. Which which um, will involve, you know, uh, eating out. It will involve um, activities um, outside of the the gym. Um, so, uh, you know, all those kind of things will be coming to fruition this this uh, this year. So, yeah, um, really buzzing for that. The the Metcon Games was absolutely mega last mm. year. Like the Metcon Games 2.0 was just absolutely Class. unbelievable. Yeah. It was so good. It was so good. Such a good atmosphere. Two teams against each other, you know, we're going to do a similar thing as, say, uh, coming up early this year. Mm -hmm. And it was just mega. And then, you know, big social in the evening, fantastic stuff. That's what and, it's all about. And most importantly, it came with limited edition stash. Yeah, we, yeah, we still, members were stashed up. Members were stashed up, limited edition stash. More of that to come. Very excited, very excited. So big things uh, in regards to that. Um, obviously, it's a Commonwealth Games year as well. Mm -hmm. um, which will be huge for Birmingham. Um, it's going to be huge for us as well. Um, we've got a couple of our members, uh, hopefully all things being well, will be um, making that journey. Well, it's not much of a journey because it's no. Birmingham, but they'll, <laughs> be, the uh, they'll be putting the jersey on and, uh, and representing the country, which will be mm. absolutely huge. You know, So we're buzzing for that. Um, we potentially might be working with uh, a team who might be coming in to use the facility. Um, uh, just 
uh, the week, uh, week or two before the Commonwealth Games, but we won't announce that yet. We'll announce that a little bit nearer the time, but that's very exciting as well. There's going to be a big buzz around Birmingham, and you know, I think it's going to be a fantastic thing for the city. Fantastic, fantastic year, fantastic year, Fan- fantastic thing for gyms like ourselves as well. I think who, you know, uh, I think just more and more people are going to, you know, off the back of that, be you know, looking at performance related training mm. and health and, and hopefully we'll we'll thrive off the off the back of that. Um, big year in terms of um, I say like further developing our Barbell Club, our new version of Barbell Club, which, you know, is uh, is now a year a year or so old, um, in terms of, you know, online app programming, um, you know, uh, access to a personal coach to you know, to, to guide and to look after nutrition and programming considerations. That has revolutionized the gym and the training progress uh, uh, systems that we, that, that we do, looking to even further improve that. Uh, Mekon's buzzing as, as always, brilliant atmosphere. You know, looking forward to all that. Hopefully some uh, little bits and pieces of equipment will be added throughout the year as well, as you guys know. Uh, we're always looking to reinvest into the gym. You know, your memberships, you know, massive part of those will go, you know, always go back into improving uh, the standards of what we deliver in terms of staffing, in terms of, you know, heating that we've put in, in terms of equipment that we upgraded uh, towards the end of last year. This year is no different. We'll be looking to chip away and further improve what is already an extensive uh, equipment list. Um, Exciting year, exciting year. Loads more stuff as well, which we will, you know, develop as the year goes on. We'll update. We will update. update. We'll update. Um, so yeah, I think it's probably a nice way to round off. Um, as I say, you know, I think to, to round up the the potty, um, just focus on get get your ass back in the gym first of all. But within that, just a good steady pace to get you back into mm-hmm. it. Sensible standards, uh, goals. You know, ambitious, you know, longer term goals and then just focus on short, you know, short day to day, good habits, good routines. Um, and uh, yeah, let's start off and say the Barbell Club programming is based around that. It's just building good, solid blocks. We're in the first block now. We're going to build towards some heavier stuff towards the spring. Um and if you're not doing the barbell club programming, just you know, following that sort of routine where we're going to build up nice and nice and steadily, building good habits, build a foundation, and progress into heavier, Gucciier work. We go again. We go again. Simple as that. Fantastic. Thanks for tuning in, guys. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me. Catch you next time. <laughs>